I'm Patrick Bailey with whiteboardcoder.com. Today is April 3rd, 2017, and in this video I'll be going over how to install Gollum and configure it on Ubuntu 1604. And also I'm going to be doing a little customization of the interface. Okay, what is Gollum? Well, here's the Gollum Git Wiki page right here. Uh, so you can go here and actually get all the information and download it from there. But uh, basically what it is, it's the wiki engine that is used by GitHub. Now, when I say that, I don't, it's, uh, whenever you get on GitHub, typically people are putting readme files in here, like you see this one even has. Uh, but if you, each GitHub repository has a separate wiki, or potentially can. In this case, I can go to their wiki page, which I should hope they have one. Uh, and this actually is a separate Git repository that produces this wiki. Now, it's also um, my understanding that the GitHub uh, GitHub itself used or is using uh, Gollum. But at some point they kind of forked it and have done their own thing and they've done a lot of tweaks and customization. So when you download Gollum and install it, you're not going to get exactly this quite yet. But you can do some tweaks to it. Now, why am I doing this? Well, I've gotten used to using the GitHub Wiki page uh, in my regular job, actually in my past couple of jobs. And I think it makes for a good wiki engine for DevOps to put a lot of information there. And it works pretty well because you can pull it all down. It's all a Git repository. You have your entire history of your changes and you um, can grep through it too, which is kind of nice. Um, so I like it and I've gotten used to it. I'm also of the mind that github.com is going to be around for a long time. It's probably a tool I'm going to keep on using for years. And I do like their wiki, so I'll probably keep using it for years. So I thought to myself, well, I'll I, I like it so much, it works so well, I like to roll it at home to document this stuff on my servers at home and different things like that. Um, and in so doing, I kind of want to make it look and feel like the GitHub wiki and how they had it set up, which they're using Gollum, but they've done some tweaks to it, and it, I guess, diverged at some point. Um, but that's my real goal. I want to get a wiki internally in my own system here at home that's going to mimic, as close as possible, uh, what I see in the GitHub, re in the, the GitHub wiki. So with that, let's get going to on install installing it. Okay, now for installing. So Gollum runs on Ruby, and uh, so with that you need to install Ruby. But uh, there's a couple options. One, if you actually, I probably put a link up in here. If you click on the information, I'll probably put a link to my um, blog post on this. Where at first I used the Ruby version manager to kind of install it all. But looking back, I'm not doing anything special, and this is going to be an individual machine, so I'm just going to install Ruby and not do anything special. But that's an option. You can do that. Uh, but with that in mind, I'm just going to do kind of a raw thing here. Let me sh uh, let me prove. I have Ubuntu 16.04, and pretty much nothing's installed right now. So it's just a kind of a fresh install, nothing much on there. But now let me get all this stuff. sudo app dash get install Ruby. Uh, uh, Ruby dev make let's see zlib 1g dash dev lib icu dash dev build essential get and cmake and i believe that should be all you need and last time i ran this it took quite a while i mean i'm running on a small machine there's a lot of things to install and build so your mileage may vary but I'll speed it up here because who wants to watch me? Oh, let me do a. Yeah, let me just run it. That's fine. Do yes. And let it go. Okay, that was a lot quicker than it was yesterday for me. You might have just been having issues then. But okay, so we got all that installed. So now we need to uh, use the gem tool to install Gollum. And there you go, sudo gem install golem. Okay, there we go. We finally got it all installed, which kind of took forever. Um, so now it's installed. I'm going to go uh, start up Gollum. So first I'm going to make a directory, and I'm just going to call it wiki test. Go in there. And now 
what uh, Gollum is, it needs a Git repository. So it's going to read from a Git repository. So I'll just make initial empty Git repository with Git in it dot. And then I'll just run it. And if I run it in this case, it'll start Gollum here in this directory. And it will listen on port 4567. There we go. So now it should be up and running. And, well, oh, let me kill it for one second. If I look at ifconfig-a, just to show you, uh, this particular machine is running on 192.168.077. So let me start up Golem again. And so if I go to 192.168.077.4567, I should see that I have this. See that I got there? Well, I guess I'd make a home page. Okay, so I'll just make a home page. This is some data, and section, see what else I can do. I don't know what they call it, quoted. Okay, and they have a preview button here, so I can hit preview, which will open a new page so you can see what it'll look like. Uh, let me go back and just save it. And there we go. So here's my home page now. So I can click on here, or I can just go here, and I can see that I actually have a wiki. And I can click on here, and I can edit it. Click save, and we can see that I, I have a wiki. Um, now, one of the first issues I had, and let's see if I can repeat it, with the default installation, if I come down here and I try to make a markdown table, Like that. Simple enough. Now if I hit save, it doesn't work. And it's weird. And I don't know why. Um, because it, it can... You can install different markdown engines. From what I understand from the default, it should uh, use Cramdown. And if I... Well, let me just open up another... I'll leave that running. Uh, if I go in here and I look at my... Oh, also, if you're unfamiliar with this, as you check things in, it will actually check them into the repository. So do a git log-n2. I can see that Anonymous push it up there. So every time I, I push a change up there through Gollum, it's going to be put into the local git repository. Um, <laughs> but one thing I can do is I can... I think I have cramdown installed. So I can do cramdown um, and feed it this markdown file. And if I look at it, I can see that it makes a table. So I don't understand why it's not making a table. Uh, the simple way I found to get around that is just to actually go and install. Let's see. You can do a sudo gem. Sudo gem install uh, GitHub markdown and let that gem install. Now, on my wiki, on my wiki, on my uh, blog post, I document it a little bit better, but it turns out there are several different ones it can use, and you don't really designate which one it is, it's just kind of alphabetical, which is weird in my mind. So whichever one comes first, it'll actually use that first. In this case, I can use Markdown, and that should start using GitHub Markdown, which should fix my problem. Which I don't think I should have had the problem in the first place, but I don't have time to go debug that. And there we go. So that fixed my problem. Um, I have tables now. So for a base install, you're kind of done. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start fixing a few things. Uh, I want to basically get this working and for me working and looking kind of like the GitHub wiki. Um, and I'm nowhere near there right now. But the first thing, I'm, next thing I'm going to tackle is emojis. So if I come here on, down here and do a smile emoji, which will work on uh, GitHub wiki, and I save it, I get nothing. So the next thing I'm going to do is fix that.
Okay, emojis. How to fix emojis in Gollum. Well, first I want to point you to this emoji cheat sheet. So you can go, I'll put this link in the show notes. You can go to this URL and here's a bunch of little things. Now, I do like some of the emojis because some of them are kind of nice for uh, not just being silly and showing ghosts and little smiley faces, but for actually doing some important things like check marks or a thing like that. There's actually some lot of interesting things down here. Like here you can, you can get these numbers. You can get arrows, um, there's check boxes, X, X's, shebang. There's a lot of things that we use. Like I would use things like bang, bang or intero bang to say there's a problem with this little area in the note or check marks, you know, if you want to check mark stuff. So there's a lot of useful things I actually use. Uh, so I actually like it. Not the silly ones, but the important ones. They get used a lot um, in my line, in my business. Uh, but anyway, so how do we fix it? It's actually pretty easy. It's actually how you run Gollum. So instead of just running Gollum, you just run Gollum dash dash emoji. That simple. When it installed Gollum, it actually installed some emoji library tools, and so it actually uh, will work. So now I started it, and if I go back to my Gollum page where I have that smile right there, it's not working right now. Uh, if I reload it, it should give me a smile. Yep, and there we go. Uh, now if I edit it and I throw some other stuff in there, Let's see, uh, let's see, intero bang. Intero bang, bang, bang. Uh, some other favorite ones I have, let's see. The white chip mark, I like that one. Oh, I already copied, okay. Oh, does that help you copy things? Oh, that'd be nice. Oh, just click on copy and oh, I like that. I didn't know, I didn't know it did that. X. Yeah, you learn something every day. Use that one a lot. Um, well, that's another reason to use this emoji sheet, cheat sheet, huh? Mm -hmm. What other things do I use? Oh, you might use numbers. Signal strength. I don't know. So put all those in there. Let's just make sure they work. Uh, now, depending on what markdown interpreter using it might not work. I think the one I'm using right now, uh, the GitHub Markdown, works for all these just fine. Oh, I didn't copy Intero, in, Intero Bay. <laughs> didn't copy that one correctly. Let me fix that. Boom, save. There we go. So they're all working just fine. The only problem is, is they're not exactly like the GitHub ones. That's going to drive me a little crazy. Um, let me go find, let me show one that's very different. They're close. I know Ghost is very different. There we go. So you can see there at those. Now if I copy all of these and I go to a GitHub wiki page, and I'll just edit one of these that I have as a test, slap all those in there and save it, you can see that they are, and go back, go back, there you go, you can see that they are actually different icons, they're close, but they're different icons, maybe it's a licensing thing or something. So that's something I hope to fix in the future, but I can't do anything with it right now because I actually would have to tear a lot of things out and replace all the images, and that's a lot of work. But for now, that's how you get emojis working, and that's a good start to it. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is sidebars. If you look into a GitHub wiki, you can actually add a sidebar. So right here I can go click on this, and let's see, I can... information and I can do things like that um, and save it and I have a nice little navigable sidebar you're not working there you didn't like the things yeah anyway I have to go tweak on that anyway you have a sidebar you can tweak on that but if you go over here and look at uh, this guy, I've got no sidebar. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually add a sidebar. 
Okay, so to do that, we need to add a sidebar. So I killed Gollum, and you can actually you need to go in here. The simplest way is to go in here by hand and make a file called uh, sidebar, sidebar.md. So just make that, and I'm just going to put some, I'm going to copy and paste, I'll mess this up. Just going to put a few things in it. And then just save it. Just some simple markdown. And then I'm going to add it all to the repository. To the status. Um, and just say I added a sidebar. At which point I should have an error because I haven't set my configuration yet. There we go. I don't have my user.email and my user.name set up. Now, on my own system where I was tweaking on this, I actually put my own username on email which now upon reflection is probably not the best idea to do it because in the long term I actually want to have this on a remote Git repository and it would be nice to know where the changes were made. So an easy way I think I can do that is I can do a git config uh, user.email and then just call it golem. You know, golem at, you know, whatever what URL is, email is yours. Uh, git config uh, user.name and just call it Gollum. Call him Wiki. How about that? Um, kind of like doing that better than what I did before. Oh, so now we commit it all. Okay. Commit it all. So now it should be good. And start Gollum up again. Oh, well, how about with emojis? There we go. And it should be running. Now let's check it. And now I've got a sidebar. And if I look over here, I clean this sidebar up a little bit. And so, you know, now I've got a sidebar. It's somewhat similar, but not exactly what I want. Um, but I have a sidebar. Uh, you can also do a footer. And if you attempt to do a header, a header will actually go right in this section below this top uh, bar. Um, and I got no need for that. Now, the next thing I need to do is I do want to tweak this top bar. This top bar has a bunch of stuff I don't want. If I go over here and look at this, which I've gotten used to, I like just having this simple thing with the edit new page. So I am going to tweak this to do that. And one way to do that is with templates. So I'm going to go over how to use and set up templates. Okay, you can set up your own custom templates in here. And so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go into my home directory and I'm going to make a directory where I'm going to put my custom templates in. And that's going to be separate from my Git repository, my Gollum Git repository. Uh, so I'll just do this. Uh, what do I call it? Gollum custom. I'm in templates folder. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to clone uh, the whole entire Gollum Git repository. I just happen to get.com, golem, golem.get. Oh, how about clone? There we go. So pull the whole thing down because what I'm going to do is actually copy their default template into my folder. Uh, so I have a good starting point. So I can copy dash r, uh, golem, lib, and we got templates. Oh, lib, column, templates, copy everything there, and copy it over to my golem custom templates. So I'm just copying everything over there. So now it's all there. Now the next thing you need to do, you can just go in there, column, custom, templates, and you can see here's all these uh, mustache files. Uh, so to run it, all we got to do is when we run Gollum, so we got a moment, emoji, we just have to add another thing. We can say dash dash, where am I? Uh, template directory. Template dash directory. And then you can give it a directory that you want to do. So I'll do that. Uh, Gollum custom templates. And that should work. So now I'll use those templates versus the other ones. And right now I said exact copy. So it should be the same thing. I just want to make sure that Gollum came back and it is, it's working. 
So now I can go in there and I can start tweaking them. So I'm going to edit uh, page dot mustache because that's the main page. Oh, yeah. And before I start doing that, it is hard to read. So I have found a website. Uh, That goes over this. Oh, not that one. There we go. Because I like having nice syntax. In fact, let me make sure I put that in my show notes. Uh, Vim syntax. And they go over how to install the syntax, which I'm going to do right now because looking at this is going to drive me nuts. So you can go back to my main directory and I can do a I can do a git clone of their repository. I'm going to copy and paste that so I don't mess it up. Okay. That's bad. Let's see if I can fit it on one line. Two lines. There we go. So git clone, pull that all in, and I'm going to make a directory dash p. In my case, I don't have a vim. So I'll make a vim syntax a dot vim ft detect and a dot vim ft plugin. That's just kind of how they set it up. And I'll do a copy r dash r uh, mustache dot vim f uh, syntax and then everything and then copy it to my vim syntax. There we go. Then do the same thing uh, mustache dot vim ft Detect dot vim ft detect. Now one last time, cup dash r mustache dot vim ft plugin everything dot vim ft plugin. There we go. So I think I should be good now. Let me go back into my column custom templates. Now let's see if I can. There we go. Now I got some syntax highlighting, which is nice to have. Uh, so now just to prove that I can do some stuff to it, uh, I can go here to, let's say, latest changes. So I'll do a search on that. And there's latest changes. That, that I changed. Now I think it'll pick it up immediately. I don't need to restart Gollum. Yep, there we go. So it has been changed. So with that in mind, I'm going to do a big copy and paste from what I've done. And I might go over it a little bit here. Um, I'm just going to wipe everything out and copy and paste. Because there's a lot of stuff I want to get rid of. And now if you want this exact file, you can find it on my blog site. Uh, so there we are. So now I'm actually, there's a few things I'm going to throw in here that I threw in at the end that I'm not going to use right now. I'm, I'm actually putting an icon in there. Um, I'm putting um, I'm putting an editable section in there because I want to be able to edit the sidebar, but I won't get into that quite yet. Uh, let's see. Let's see, now I've just made, there's that new page. And an edit. So that's pretty much I just want to remove everything else and just put those there. And then the rest of it's pretty similar to what it was before. And then I put a, a footer on there with a copyright for kick. So now if I save that, there we go. So now I've moved everything. Uh, but now as you'll see, I, I've stuck an image in here and you'll see there's, there's no real image. I stuck an image in here, there's no real image yet. And I have edit new page, uh, but just to be anal because I've gotten used to this interface, uh, I'd rather have it green. Just make it match and make it feel more at home. Uh, to, and to do that, I need to go edit the CSS file. I can actually bring in a custom CSS file and use it and override, or I should say over, well, cascade. Uh, I can still use the original CSS they're using, but I can cascade and use mine. My stuff will override what they have. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually make a custom CSS file. Okay, custom CSS. So I've, I've stopped my Gollum and I'm going to go in here into my uh, repository. I'm going to make a file called custom CSS, which will be part of my repository. 
And I'm just going to I'm going to do a big copy and paste with my end result that I made. And it's just CSS. I mean, there's nothing special about it. You just need to figure out what you've done on your templates and how to incorporate what you're going to do with what. Um, so I just did a bunch of tweaking. But uh, you can go on my on my blog site and figure and copy and paste what I did if that's close to what you want to do. Um, so just a bunch of tweaking. Nothing nothing too awful special about it. Maybe I'll just kind of scroll through it in case you want to see it. Um, but it's easier to copy. No, it's not too awful long at this point. Let's see, there we go. So now if I save it, it's there, but if I try to run Gollum again, it shouldn't work because it's not part, it hasn't been added to the Git repo yet, so it's not aware of it. I believe you can, well, if I go in here and it, I think it'll serve files in here that aren't, I could change them by hand, I think, and it'll work, but they have to at first at least be added to the Git repository, otherwise it's going to, going to ignore them. So now if I start this, since I did not add it yet, I should see no changes, if I recall correctly. And we got no changes, so as, as expected. So let me kill this and add it. Okay, it's been added. And then now let me restart Gollum with emojis and my special template directory. And now it should take all my changes. He says, hopefully. Or not, because it's a butthead. What did I do wrong? Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's a reason for that. And I'm just being a dummy. Uh, if you if you want to override it, you have to actually say that you want to do that. So you can come down here and do dash dash CSS. And that basically says, use my CSS. If it's, if, use the custom.css file if it's there. Um, and I'm not going to get into it in this video, but there's also a thing for JavaScript. You can actually add your own JavaScript in, which I'm not doing yet, nor have I done yet. Uh, okay, there we go. Now I should have more stuff. Ah, see, now I've cleaned things up. And in my case, I actually widened the whole thing because part of GitHub, the GitHub wiki, it's not wide enough sometimes for me. And now I've made that green. So now I can edit this page and that all works. I go to hit a new page and I get the hover like I want. So just some tweaks. And then also here I kind of moved, I changed the look of that. So it's a little more like that. Um, also I added, an, there's an image here uh, that refers to, which actually is a button. And if I click on it, it'll actually edit the sidebar. Because otherwise it's kind of hard to edit the sidebar. So that actually just takes you right here. You can edit it. The only unfortunate thing is if I if I edit it, let me let me remove that. I don't like that. Uh, hmm. Let's say sidebar. So if I edit it and save it, or pre if I save it, it will save it. But now it takes me to that exact page. So the worst case is you have to go back. And one thing I did to make to fix that temporarily is my main image is actually a link back to the home page. So that's kind of just a quick fix. In the long run, I think I can get in here and tweak that actual, the edit file so that if it's editing a sidebar, that when you're done, it'll actually go back to the home page or the page you were previously at. I'm not sure. I just haven't done it yet. Um, but that's on my to do list. Uh, okay. So there's your custom CSS. Up next, I need to actually pull the images in and get those working. Okay, I got two images I want to put in there. One is just a simple logo for my company, so I'll just stick it in there. Uh, so I kill Gollum, I need to go uh, make a directory. I'll just make an images directory. And then I'm going to just copy it up there. I guess I'm going to do one, six, eight, zero, seven, seven, and wiki test. Is that what I called it? And yeah, just uh, images. So 
So I'm just going to copy that image up there. And hopefully it's there now. There we go. Uh, but I need to add it. Otherwise, uh, Gollum won't be aware of it. Now let's check the status. Added logo. Okay, so now if I go restart Gollum, mm -hmm, I should see a logo up here. Oh, didn't like that. Okay, what did I do? Oh, I'm in the wrong directory. But I do that. I was in the images directory. Okay. So now that should work. Okay, there we go. So now I got that. So now I can go edit this, tweak it, make myself happy, uh, hit save, and then I can click on there to go back to home. Just a convenience for now. Uh, next thing, I need to go put a little edit icon up over here. And if you look at these guys, they just have a little pencil over there. So I kind of like to repeat the process. You know, it's convenient. Uh, so with that in mind, one thing I use is Icon Finder. So iconfinder.com. Uh, they have a lot of free icons, a lot of things you can download. Also, I do pay for icons every so often. Uh, they're usually like a buck or so. They're not too bad. I usually load up about 10 bucks on there every so often. And then every so often when I can't find a free one or make my own, I just grab one or two, which is convenient. But for a pencil, they got free ones. Uh, in fact, here is a free one I'm using. And there's a link to it, and I'll put it in the show notes. Or it's actually on my... It's on my blog, but let me put it in the show notes here so I don't forget. Icon. Okay, so you can just go download that, or here is the actual commands. So I'll kill this, and I'll go into images, and I'll do wget, and I'll pull that down. And I'm going to pull the image size of 32 down, 32 by 32 pixels. And then I'll move it to, I'll move 32 to edit uh, pencil, which is what I called it. Edit pencil, edit, edit image. And let's just restart Gollum from Gollum's home directory. Okay. There we go. There we go. And now I've got a pretty little edit button. So now I can click there. It just looks prettier now. So now I'm closer. Um, getting there. So there, there you go. So I got everything set up just right. I got the edit button. Uh, but now what's left to do? A lot. There's a lot left to do because, you know, this is closer. I kind of got things arranged like I want, but it is not exactly what I'm seeing over here. I mean, if I go in here and I edit, they have a, there's a couple things, you know, they have, um, their editing tool is much cleaner, nicer. I mean, this one's not bad. I mean, we're close. You can see where they're, but see, like I have no preview. I'd like to have a preview. Um, so I'd like to get this more close, at least with a preview. You know, if I could have this with a preview, that would probably be good. Um, other things I need to do, I need to get the auto sync. I've seen some blog posts on this, but right now my Git repository is just local. What I'd like to do is have it auto sync both ways so that when you uh, check something, when you save something here in Gollum, it actually will push it up to a remote repository and vice versa, that if you uh, push something to a remote repository, that this will listen to it and pull it in. So I need to get that done. Um, let's see. Uh, the emojis. I don't have to get the correct emojis. I need to get that figured out. Uh, another thing on my list to do is to, you know, right now I'm just running it bare bones. You know, I'm running it by hand. And in fact, what I'm doing right now, just temporarily, I guess I'll show you, is I'm just running it in screen uh, and then detaching. I'm actually running Tmux, but most people don't understand. Most people don't have Tmux, which is kind of an improved screen. Uh, but what I would probably... What I'm doing right now, you know, let's copy, what is screen? Screen one's the first command, right? So that should work, I think. Yes, no, maybe so. 
Yeah. Okay. So that works. So that's all I'm doing right now, which is a very, very temporary fix. Uh, I don't like that. I need to make it a, um, see a control A, C to get out of there. Let's see. Control A, C, right? Oh, control A, D. Control A, D to detach. So now it's running in screen. And there's my screen. I hit screen again, I should reattach. Oh no. Uh, screen dash ls, screen dash x, I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's running. That's kind of how I'm doing it temporarily, but it's not a good thing you want in the end result. I think I'd rather stick something like nginx in front of it. I think there's some ways of doing that. I'd probably rather have it, you know, make it a system D, you know, service or something. Uh, but in the meantime, I got it running. There's a lot more things to do. I like it, uh, but I'm going to have to do a lot more tweaks. But, you know, hopefully I can do some tweaks every month or so, and eventually I'll get it exactly like I want. Uh, but for now, it's nice having a nice little wiki that's similar to GitHub's wiki. Still got a ways to go, though, to get it where I would like it. But anyway, that's the end of this video, and that's kind of how you download install, and install Gollum and do a little tweaking to it to get it a little closer to how the GitHub wiki looks and feels. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder.com. View any code I may have thrown up as a gist uh, at GitHub under the username patmandenver, or check out my blog site at whiteboardcoder.com.